Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Boris Effects, and I'm back again with another Avid tutorial. And in this lesson, we're talking about the new Corner Pin Studio inside of Continuum 2020. In this lesson, I want to show you how you can do accurate corner pin tracking utilizing Mocha directly inside of Corner Pin Studio to create excellent end results every time. All right, so here we are inside of Media Composer. This is the shot that we are going to be working with. The shot comes to us courtesy of Vadivo. And what I do also need is the shot that we're going to be using for the actual screen replacement. I'm just going to put that up on video track number two. I'm just going to make sure that I don't take any audio with it. There we go. Very nice. And as you can see, all this is is a screen record of the Boris FX website showcasing the fact that they just won three engineering technical Emmy awards. So great job for the team at Boris FX. And what we're now going to do is we're going to take this element and we're going to pin it to the corners of this monitor. Now before I do that, what I like to do is to try to give myself uh, a little bit of a buffer zone and add an extra layer of realism at the same time. Now what do I mean by that? Well, Normally when you take a look at a screen or even a monitor, what you're normally going to have is a little bit of a black edge around the actual image. Now, this is going to help us in two ways in this example. One, obviously stylistic. It's going to look a little bit more realistic. But what it's also going to let us do is it's going to let us cheat the corners of our screen just a little bit since we will be placing this pin on top of the screen. All right. Now, there's a couple ways that we can do this. One is in effect and one is not. So let's talk about the in effect way of doing this first. Now to talk about that, we will actually need to have the effect applied. So I'm going to hit Command or Control and 8 on the keyboard. I'm going to type in Corner Pin. And you'll see that once I type that in, two options come up. Corner Pin Studio as well as Corner Pin Obsolete. Now what is the difference between the two of them? Well, since we are talking about Continuum 2020, from this point forward, you will only use Corner Pin Studio to do all of your Corner Pin work. Now, why is Corner Pin Obsolete still there in the Obsolete category? Well, if you happen to go back and need to unarchive a project to revise it, and you happen to use the Corner Pin effect inside of that project, you will always have the older effect available to you for project updating. So that's a super handy thing to have. So keep that in mind. Moving forward, Corner Pin Studio only. For legacy projects, you just need to get in and adjust quickly. Go with the old Corner Pin effect that you probably already have applied in your timeline. All right. So let's now take Corner Pin Studio. I'm just going to drag it and drop it down onto my shot. Now let's just view that layer. And you'll see that once I do, we now have our image shrunk down. All right. I'm just going to move my effects palette out of the way. Let's actually just pin it right over here. There we go. Very nice. And let's now come in and let's work with this effect. Now, actually, to be honest, I don't even need the effects palette up anymore, at least for the time being. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to step into effects mode here. Shift and Y is my shortcut. If you don't have it mapped, don't worry. You can always find it right up here at the top of your timeline. I'm just going to position the effects editor just to the left of my larger composer window. And you'll notice that with the effects selected, I can now see the four corner pins that I will be working with. Now I'm just going to make a noticeable adjustment to them. And we're going to come back to why I did that in just a second. All right. So let's talk about getting in and adding that black border around our footage in effect. Now to do this, I actually am going to talk a little bit about what makes Corner Pin Studio the studio because it could have just been called corner pin but there's some extra parameters in here like color correction like light wrap effects that you would normally have to add as a secondary effect or a tertiary effect you can now do all of that work with one single effect which is what makes corner pin a studio version of the effect now let me just get this back to be roughly where i had it before which is fine for the purposes of me showing this to you and what i'm now going to do is come down and i'm going to turn light wrap on all right. Now, once I turn light wrap on, I'm just going to zoom in just a little bit to the image here. Okay. And I'm just going to pan over. Maybe I'll zoom in one more time just to get us nice and close. All right. Okay. Now you'll notice that as I turn light wrap off and on, you're going to notice that the light wrap appears. Now, what's interesting about the light wrap in this example is the fact that it's actually green and not black. Now, why is it green? Well, keep in mind right now, what the 
light wrap parameter is looking to is the background layer. And the background layer is, of course, that green on the computer screen. So as I pan over, you'll notice that the wrap actually changes color based on where we are. It's green over here, white over here. Now for us, for the purposes of what we're doing, I don't want that. I want a solid color and I don't want white. What I want is black. Now, as soon as I say, okay, you'll now see that black light wrap appear around the edge of my footage. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that you'll notice that it doesn't come to a very solid black. It's a bit of a gradient. So this is where you need to decide which for you is the better way to go. A little bit of a faded edge, or do you want to have a solid black border around your footage? And for us, I think I'm going to go with the solid black footage option. I'm just going to add another layer here. And let's just make sure I step out of effects mode here. Perfect. Select. We're going to take our black title. We're going to drop it onto video track two, like such. I'm going to come back to my effects palette here. Let's just close that window. I'm just going to type in 3D warp. And all we're going to do is we're going to take 3D warp. We're going to drop it in here and we're going to shrink this layer down. We should just zoom back here. Very nice. By one whole percent. We're just going to punch in 99. There we go. It's now shrunk down. We're now going to take these two layers. We're going to collapse them together like such. Perfect. Come back up here. Corner pin studio. Let's take it option or alt drag it down, drop it onto our footage. And we are now back to where we were before. And if you take a look, we now have a solid edge around our image. Now, I'm just going to put this back the way that I had it before. Now, why would I do something like that? Kev, why are you doing that? It already looks weird. You're probably going to take this and just pin it out to the edges. And to be honest, if I was working with a previous version of corner pin, that's what I would do. However, you may have noticed that we've got a bit of a problem. And I say a problem, but it's not a problem. It's a real world situation. Cameras are shaky. We've got this image where somebody's, you know, taking the care to put little track marks for us. If we were point tracking, that would be helpful, but we're plan our tracking. So that actually doesn't even matter for the purposes of what we're doing. So we're going to need to get in and we're going to need to track this image. Now, one thing that I love about Corner Pin Studio is that if you've ever been afraid to dive headfirst into Mocha, Corner Pin Studio is what I like to call the perfect stepping stone to get you moving in the Mocha direction. All right, I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Now, I purposely moved that one point of the corner pin out of the way. Now, why did I do that? Well, you'll notice that we have these three points that were exactly where they were when I applied the effect. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to twirl up light wrap. I'm going to come down to Mocha Motion Tracker, and I'm simply going to launch Mocha. Now, once I launch Mocha, I want you to take a look at what Mocha has done. Mocha has actually taken, and I'll close the window for just one second here, is that it's taken these four points and it's given me a perfect visual representation of exactly what's going on with those corner pin pins right here inside of Mocha. What this is, is this is the planar surface. Now, I'm just going to refer to it as the surface from now on because I don't want to get too much into technical terms right now when we're only getting started in Mocha. What this surface represents, the four points of this surface, the four corners represent the four pins of our corner pin. So wherever these go, if I drag this over here like such, I close Mocha and I say save, you'll notice that that's immediately represented in my timeline. All right. Now what's important to keep in mind about the surface itself is the surface is not doing us any work. It's not doing any favors for us right now. It's going to be added after we do our track. So what I can do for right now, just to save myself a little bit of sanity, is I can just turn the surface off so we don't have to look at it. You'll see that we have something here called corner pin search area. That's what this shape represents. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of the points. I'm going to press command or control and A to select them all. And we're going to sharpen them up a little bit. And I don't need to worry about these points here because like I said, we're not doing point tracking, we're doing surface tracking. So I'm just going to come all the way over to about here and I'm just going to manipulate the box around the entire screen. All right, right to about there. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to track this surface. Now you'll notice that I wasn't at the beginning and I wasn't at the end. I was just kind of, you know, somewhere randomly in the middle. Well, don't think that I need to go back to the beginning and reposition everything because I don't. All I need to do is to simply hit the track button. Now, one thing you're going to notice is that once Mocha starts tracking, if you look at the search area that we defined, you can actually see that it's 
pretty darn locked on there. Now I've actually sped the tracking up for the purposes of this example because this is you know a fairly long track and I don't want us to get too bogged down but basically what this is going to do is it's going to give us the ability to lock in our surface or the Boris FX website for that matter onto the top of this monitor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to track forward as you can see here and then what we're going to do is we're going to jump and we're going to track backwards. All right now I to basically to get in and track backwards I don't need to do anything except come back to the point where that first keyframe was added right there and simply hit track backwards. Now this is the part that I've sped up here just so that we can get this done as quickly as possible. And now that our track is done, we're ready to come back up and turn our surface on. Now, before I actually take the surface and put it where it needs to go, what I'm going to do is just come in and hit play. Just hit the space bar and take a look at how locked in our surface is. So let's just stop that for one second. I'm going to grab one of the pins and I'm going to place it roughly where it needs to go. Now, two keyboard shortcuts that are essential for you to know inside of Mocha. One is the Z key, one is the X key. The Z key or the zoom key will let you zoom in and out of your image based on where you are clicking. Okay, so if I click over here, we'll zoom in like such. And the X tool right beside it is to pan. Now there is another tool that we can utilize if we're sick of zooming in and zooming out constantly. And it's right up here and it's the show zoom window option. What happens when I select that is as soon as I grab one of my pins, you'll notice that I now get a close-up view of it in the upper left-hand corner so we can position this pin wherever we want it to go. So let's pan down. I'm just going to position this over here roughly about there. I want to make sure that it's outside of the green area. And I also want to point something else out to you that you may or may not have noticed when I got in and I started tracking. And that is I didn't adjust one parameter. I didn't adjust anything about how precise I wanted Mocha to be, what I wanted it to track. I left everything on its defaults and it basically gave us a track that looks a little bit like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the grid on because the grid makes it even easier to see how well of a track you've got on the first attempt. And that's pretty darn locked in there. Now, if I wanted to get in and maybe I had a lot of movement and the track wasn't as good, we can get in and adjust the percentage of pixels that Mocha is going to utilize right here. And even if we want to get in and track shear as well as perspective, because right now I'm only tracking translation, scale, and rotation. You also have the ability, if you need to, to adjust the track. And I just want to point this out, but I'm not going to talk about that in this lesson because I don't want to overload you with information. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the grid off and all I'm going to do is simply close Mocha and I'm going to say save. And as soon as I do, you're going to notice that boom, my pin has now locked itself onto the monitor. You'll see that we have our black edge around there. And if I come back now and I hit the space bar, you'll see that this computer screen is essentially locked onto that computer and this composite is pretty much ready to go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the next example. And in the next example, this is the situation. It's fairly similar to what we just talked about. However, you'll notice that our talent's hand comes over top of the iPad. So how are we going to get in and to do this composite? Well, we're gonna use two studios in this example, Corner Pin Studio, and Primat Studio. All right, now for us to get rolling, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show the dual monitor layout and I'm going to copy my composite and we're going to put things back the way that we had it in the original example because basically we're going to do the tracking exactly as we did before. The only difference is, is that when we're done, we're going to swap the layers to put our footage in behind the screen. So we know where we're going. We're going back to our effects palette here. We're going to type in corner pin studio. There it is. I'm going to take it, drag it and drop it by holding option or alt down onto our footage. Shift and Y to step into the effect. Now, once we're in here, all we're going to do is simply launch the Mocha motion tracker. Once we're in here, again, I don't need my surface right off the bat. Command or Control and A to select all my points. Let's just position them around the tablet. I don't want to say it's an iPad or an Android device. We'll just call it a tablet for right now. And what we're going to do here, and I should have probably started at the beginning. We're actually okay right there. What I'm now going to do is I'm just going to track through this, and we'll be back in one second to show you what the result of the track is going to look like.
All right, and we are back. I'm going to come to my grid, and I'm going to come back to the beginning of my clip. Hit play. You'll see things are pretty darn locked in there. Now, one thing that I do want to bring to your attention is that because we're going to be compositing the tablet over top of the actual pin, what you could do if you wanted to is give yourself a little bit of leeway on the corners by pushing the pin a little bit farther out, just so that you can make sure that no matter what happens, the entire image is being shown. There's no little, you know, if there's a little drift in the track at all, you won't even notice it. So keep that in mind. All right. So we're now at the point where we're ready to simply close Mocha. We're going to say save, and you'll now see that we are pinned. However, we are covering over that hand. All right. So what we're now going to do is I'm going to turn the background off, and we're going to set the background layer to be none. Now what we want to make sure of is that we're not compositing this over the background and now you'll see there is our pin, let me just step out of effects mode, locked in there perfectly tracking along as we expect it to. So let's set this composite up now. What I'm going to do, T on the keyboard, both Mac and Windows, Option or Alt C to copy this over here. We're going to swap the layers out and I'm going to drop this back into my timeline. Let's Command or Control and 8 to make sure we have the effects palette up. And we're now looking for Primat Studio. Love, love, love this keen effect inside a Media Composer. The best keyer you will get hands down. Let's just make sure that I'm looking at single monitor mode just so we can see this image as large as possible. And all I'm now going to do is simply come up and say Auto Analyze. Primat Studio will analyze the shot. You'll see there is my composite pretty much all set to go. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that much like any process that you're doing when it comes to effects work, and to be honest, I've kind of, you know, uh, been spoiled a little bit because Mocha's done a fantastic job on the first shot each time. Even with Primat Studio, as great of a job as it did, I always want to get in and you can see that my key is not as good as I might think that it is. So what I want to do is just get in, just clean this up just a little bit here, just so that our key is as perfect as it can be, like such. That's looking pretty good. We'll just clean the foreground up here because this shot is the foreground now. Uh, let's see if I can do this without... There we go. That's pretty darn close. And keep in mind that because, again, this is Primat Studio, if I was to come back and look at the final composite, you'll notice got a little bit of green around the hand here. So what we can always do is get in. We can turn edge color correction on, get in, and make whatever type of adjustments we might want to make inside of the studio aspect of Primat Studio to make this shot look exactly the way that we want it to look. And the best part is we didn't need to leave Media Composer to go to a compositing application to do this high-end compositing work. Using the power of Continuum 2020, you can do it all in your Media Composer timeline. Now, don't forget, if you subscribe to Continuum, you can download the 2020 update right now. And for more great training, don't forget to check out the Boris FX YouTube channel. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.